up, Chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be checking out the Leo Guar Strider you see here. This is one of the absolute coolest looking e-bikes I've had the privilege of reviewing. As you can see here, it's a very striking and different looking e-bike than you're typically used to. And uh, they really went above and beyond with the fit and finish. That's what sets this one apart from a lot of the competitors you're going to see out there. Currently, this bike sells for $16.49. But check the link in the description of this video for the current price. My discount code will save you $50 off the purchase price. But anyways, guys, that's enough small talk. What do you say we get right into it? So here it is, up close and personal with the Leo Guar Strider. Now, they told me that their name Leo Guar comes from combining Leopard and Jaguar, known for agility. But I like to say it's bred for its abilities and magic. You can just tell here... Just when glancing at this bike, this is just a lot different looking than your typical e-bike you see. They did a lot to differentiate this one. It has to do with the fit and finish, their branding, and I think they did a really good job. I really like the way this bike looks. Now this bike is available in four different colors. Dark coffee, avocado green, this is the matte black you see here, and they have champion gold. You can tell they uh, took pride in the way this bike looks with their branding and everything. It's just a really sharp looking bike. Leo Guar claims that this bike will fit a rider between five foot three and six foot five. For reference, this is what a six foot two rider looks like on the Leo Guar Strider. This is the seat on the maximum seat height, and here it is on the minimum. And this bike is significantly lighter than a lot of the bikes you'll see in the market as well, as this one weighs 70 pounds and they claim it has a 300 pound weight limit. This is a 48 volt e-bike. It has a 750 watt brushless geared hub motor in the rear here that produces 85 Newton meters of torque. You see here it's branded with Leo Guar. That is paired with a 720 watt hour battery that's uh, frame integrated here. LG 21700 cells inside of it. So those are good reputable cells as well. This is a three amp charger. Typical e-bikes will come with two amp charger or two and a half. That gives this bike a recharge time of five, just about five hours. Eight speed Shimano system on this bike with a Shimano Altus derailleur, eight speed trigger shifter here. To me, this is just another one of those little details that this bike does that sets it apart from the competitors. So I really like that they made some changes on this bike. So it doesn't have all the components you're used to seeing on every other bike out there. The tire company, Mission Command Tires. These are 26 by four inch fat tires. And V is a good, reputable tire company. So this is also what you see. This is a nice step above from typical e-bikes here. I really like the look of these tires. I haven't tried them as of yet, but I have high hopes. This bike has 180 millimeter Tektro hydraulic disc brakes front and rear. It's really nice to see a reputable brake brand like Tektro on this bike. It's another one of those details this bike does really well. Another thing that sticks out with this bike is... It doesn't have just regular old hard nuts you can get from a hardware store. It has these crown nuts everywhere. Looks better than seeing those regular nuts that you'll see like from a hardware store. This is a hardtail bike with front suspension and this has 80 millimeters of travel. So you can adjust your compression. There's quite a few clicks of compression in there. All the way clockwise is lockout. And on the other side here, we have your preload adjustment. This is a Leo Guar branded seat, but it has what they call Lich Key lich key texturing on it so it has like this faux leather texture on it so we're gonna have to see how this feels out on the road but uh i have high hopes for it already i believe this is a 46 tooth front chain ring and it has these nice black welgo pedals even the box that comes with the accessories has their logo on it this is a nice box this really went above and beyond on everything that's associated with this bike so the charger came in here, tool pouch here. And one of the things I like about this, this bike comes with a nice little crescent wrench. That's the first time I've seen a crescent wrench come with one of these bikes. And it gives you your typical tools that you're gonna need for the install. Ooh, and it even has a little spoke wrench, as well as a color owner's manual. Really makes me wish I could read, guys. This bike has what's called double lock technology, and it's patented. And how that works is you stick the key in once, and uh, I'm gonna get, kind of defeat the purpose because I'm doing this with one hand. You put the bike, click the key over to unlock. It partially removes the battery here, but then you go back to lock and then you can move it the full way. So that, what that does is kind of make it so you can't just accidentally stick your key in there and then flop the battery right out. You kind of just got to go back and forth and then it removes it. So that's kind of neat. To the cockpit of the bike, you have these rubberized locking grips. It has this texture pattern on there as well. This is equipped with a quarter twist throttle. 
and you have your micro shift eight speed trigger shifter. Onto the controls of this bike, to turn on the bike, you wanna hold the top button here, which will turn on your color display. It's even branded with Leo Guar. And this display gives you your basic information. It has your speedometer in the middle, it has the time of your trip, tripometer, odometer, battery in the top left, and your pedal assist level. Now, everywhere I looked on the website said this has five levels of pedal assist. However, clicking through here, it looks like this indeed has six levels of pedal assist. To turn on and off the headlight, you tap the power button and it'll turn on and off the headlight. Oh, now we've got over all those boring specs and features. What do you say we do the fun part and go take this bad boy for a ride? Come on guys, let's go. All right guys, we are out and about on the Leo Guard Strider. Now, right away, I can tell you this bike feels significantly lighter than anything I've ridden in quite a while. 70 pounds may sound heavy, but in the world of e-bikes, this is light as a feather. Go over the pedal assist settings first. I'm in pedal assist one, and it uh, feels like pedal assist one is going to give me assistance up to about eight miles an hour. Two goes to about, uh, looks like 11 or 12. Three looks like about 15 with three. Four uh, feels like about 16, 17. Five, this keeps going. 20, yeah, it actually feels like this bike cuts off right about 20 in all the modes, and that is because this is a class two e-bike in the true sense of the word, meaning this cuts you off at 20 miles an hour, which means the throttle here, throttle also takes us up to 20 miles an hour. Yeah, I don't really feel any assist from pedal assist six, so I'm not really sure what the mode, what the deal with pedal assist six is. Five feels like full power. You can unlock this bike to be class three specifications, but you need to email Leo Guar. You have to fill out a waiver and then they'll send you the code to unlock class three. For the purposes of the review, I'm not gonna be doing that. But if you get this bike and you want to make it go to class three specifications, just know that you can, but you're gonna to have to fill out a waiver. Hey, thanks. See, people like the Leo Guar Strider. What I'm noticing is this is a cadence sensor bike, but its implementation is pretty smooth. Sometimes when I get this little ramp here or these tight corners, I'll feel the bike wanting to lunge forward, but uh, it's not doing that with this bike. So I'm definitely impressed with the cadence sensor implementation so far. It feels like it's nice and smooth. So this is the Planks of Doom. This is a trail that goes through some blackberry bushes completely surrounded on both sides. Agility is highly appreciated on trails like this. I can already tell that the Leo Guar Strider is gonna have no problem with this at all. You know, I haven't ridden a hardtail bike in a while. And uh, personally, I like hardtail bikes. It does come at the expense of, you know, some of your ride quality, but personally, having the rigidity in the rear and the lightness, these are funner bikes to flick around kind of. You can, uh, they're more maneuverable, typically. So as you can see here, very maneuverable bike. Easy to ride. And it made easy work of the Planks of Doom. So I find myself riding around and I'm in pedal assist three. And it gives a pretty natural feeling to the pedals. It's not like uh, surging with power and it doesn't feel like you're riding a regular bike. It feels nice and smooth. This is a nice smooth bike. Very well implemented. They did a very good implementation of pretty much everything on this bike. Hey, here's what we look like riding on the Leo Guar Strider. Now keep in mind guys, I'm six foot two. I'm in a nice comfortable riding position with the seat post. And might I add, we're looking mighty fine out here on the trail as well. I already had one compliment so far. What do you guys think? We look pretty nice on the uh, Leo Guar Strider. I wanted to point out that yes, this is a hardtail bike, but the front fork on this feels pretty nice. I've ridden bikes with a variety of quality of front forks, and this one seems uh, pretty sufficient, for, especially for hardtail bikes. This is a decent quality. I like the tactile feel, the clicks when you go to adjust it, and you can see here it has 80 millimeters of travel. So all in all, I'd say this is pretty adequate for what this bike is gonna go for. However, I wouldn't wanna take this on any hardcore off-road trails or do anything too crazy, but I feel like for urban commuting, trails like this, gravel, this thing's gonna be more than enough. Well, we're just cruising right along. This is a nice, pleasant bike to ride. To me, this seems like it'd be a great option for somebody, perhaps a college student, to commute around the campus or 
you know, maybe for a, a younger kid who's first getting into bikes and they want to ride this to school where you don't have to worry about them going super fast and getting themselves injured. You know, you just get them a nice, well to put together bike that looks good. Their friends are going to like it. The Leo Guar Strider to me checks all those boxes. I feel like this is a really nice bike. I would have loved to have a bike like this when I was a kid. If you want to get out and do stuff like this, well, the Leo Guar is up to the task. And another thing I've noticed is uh, I like these tires so far. You know, I don't have a whole lot of experience with them yet. 26 by four inch fat tires, it can eat up a large variety of terrain. And at first I thought they were gonna be kind of a gimmick because you know, they're big and I just didn't know what to expect, but I've come to really like the fat tires because they do great on gravel, some looser dirt. They just do great on a wide variety of terrain. So I'm actually pedaling the bike now with pedal assist off. And this is like one of the first fat tire bikes where I feel like I could actually ride this without the pedal assist on. I'd have a much better time pedaling myself home on a bike like this rather than one of those 85 pound behemoths. This eight speed shift trigger shifter is nice. You just skip right through the gears and you can downshift multiple gears at the same time if you give it a nice long push. So I like the micro shift makes a pretty good product. I haven't heard about micro shift until earlier this year and I bought a derailleur and I was uh, pleasantly surprised. We're gonna be cruising around on the street for a little bit to get to our next section of trail. This is a nice bike to be on for a leisurely stroll on a Saturday afternoon such as today. I can also say this is a pretty quiet bike as well. You can hear the slight hum from the motor, but it's not very loud. Some of these geared hub motors can make, uh, you know, a significant amount of noise. This one's not bad at all. Nice and quiet. And so far, no complaints whatsoever with this seat. This seat feels nice and cushy. I think I just figured out what pedal assist sixth is, and it's just throttle only, but when you're pedaling, it gives you no pedal assist. So that's a first. I've never seen that on a bike before. But hey, okay, if you want to just pedal normally and have the throttle available to you, look no further than Pedal Assist 6 on the Leo Guar Strider. To me, this bike feels like an evolution of a, of a mountain bike. You know, like the mountain, the hardtail mountain bikes a lot of me and my, a lot of my friends had when we were kids. This is like an electric version of that with a fat tire setup, which is good. I like it. It's, it's unique. This is different. I review a lot of bikes on this channel and a lot of them are very similar. This one definitely stands out from the pack. Keep in mind guys, before all my test rides, I put flat out in these tires because there are a ton of goat heads in my area and I highly recommend that you do the same. Do not ride these things around with no flat protection. These fat tires are great for a lot of things, that may, but they're also great for getting flats because they pick up a lot of things from the trail. This is surprisingly smooth. Woo. Pretty fun. All right, time for our brake test. Keep in mind this bike has Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, front and rear with 180 millimeter rotors. And it has no problem stopping. It took me a minute to get these broken, but now these brakes grab really nice. 180 milli rotors, plenty of stopping power for this 75, 70 pound bike. Time for the hill climb portion of this test. And we're gonna go ahead, I'm downshifted, and I'm in pedal assist five, and it's time to climb up this steep incline. I don't know what grade this is because I'm not a dork, but we're gonna go. Okay. We're getting it done. I'm having to put some uh, decent amount of input from my legs in here as well, but we're doing it. This is really steep, but we're not a hill you'd want to be climbing on a regular bike. Doing about nine miles an hour now, getting the job done. Continuing around this corner here, adding some extra effort from the legs, coming around the last bend. And we did it, fellas, we did it. So while this is not the most powerful bike, I feel you're gonna be able to get yourself up some critically, pretty adequately sized hills without a huge amount of effort on your own. Part that's gonna do, this has a 750 watt motor in compliance with class two specifications. And this bike is lighter than most with good gear ratio. So a nice combination for getting yourself up decent hills. You can see, you can go conquer a decent amount of terrain on the Leo Guar Strider. I wouldn't take this on any crazy uh, single track mountain bike trails or anything, but you can do things like this without any problem whatsoever. You can even take the little uh, shortcut trails.
I almost forgot to mention, guys, this bike, in fact, has a bell. So you can let people know when you're coming up because this bike is so quiet, they wouldn't hear you otherwise. Oh, this is steep. I'm up out of the saddle pedaling here. Woo! We're doing it. It did it. Let's do a little downhill on the Strider. Woo! That was fun. Seventeen and a half miles into this ride, I'm showing three out of five bars. So I don't anticipate you could get an incredibly long range on this bike, but I think you could probably get about 30 miles riding conservatively. Guys, this is the one of the things I really appreciate about this bike. I live on the second story of an apartment building, and every time I come and go, I have to drag this bike up the stairs. And this is a cakewalk compared to my usual e-bikes. So I really appreciate that. Well, there you have it, guys, the Leo Guar Strider. Some things I really like about this bike. First off, this is a really cool looking bike. Everything on this bike is great components, a step or two above a competition under the eight-speed Shimano, the V Tire Company tires, the grips, the crown nuts on the front, the locking cables, the CAN bus system. They put a lot of care and effort into making this bike a really nice package. Some things I'm not too fond of, unfortunately, this is one of those bikes that's actually what they advertise. This is a class two bike by every definition. It is limited at 20 miles an hour pedal assist and 20 miles an hour on the throttle. And the battery is not the biggest. However, if you do want some more power or speed, you can email Leo Guar and they will give you the unlock code to make this a class three bike. What I, who do I think this bike's for? I think this would make a great bike for somebody who's new to e-bikes that doesn't want anything too crazy or perhaps a student. Uh, get this for uh, your kid that's in school and you know this is class two so they're not going to be able to go too fast and get themselves in trouble or if you're a college student and you want to ride around campus and look good in the process I think this will be a great option for that if you're interested in purchasing a Strider you can use the link in the description of this video and my coupon code will save you an additional $50 off the uh, purchase price of your bike doing so would does help support the channel and I appreciate that a lot anyways guys thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one peace